Hello, my name is Freddy Oriana and I'm a computing engineering student at the University of Houston. Today I will be talking about the code of ethics and why they should be of importance to engineers and why we must learn them because we will need them when we come into stressful and delicate situations. The National Society of Professional Engineers was founded in 1934 by David Steinman. David Steinman's reasoning behind finding it was that he wanted more qualified engineers out in the field. And his way of doing this was by founding the National Society of Professional Engineers and also by pushing universities to enforce a more rigorous education to have better and more qualified candidates leaving universities. The goal of the National Society of Professional Engineers is to protect engineers and the public from unqualified candidates. It's also to maintain the reputation of engineers. We don't want unqualified people working and putting civil, computer, or electrical engineers down. We just don't want the reputation of those hardworking people to be ruined by unqualified people. And the last goal of the National Society of Professional Engineers is for there to be integrity in an, engineer's, an, engineering in an engineer's decision. And the way that they did this was by creating the code of ethics. The code of ethics is a guideline, a set of laws that an engineer can fall back on when faced in tough situations. Today, we'll be looking at one specific code of ethic, the one that falls under the professional categories organization under section 2b. The code of ethics states, an engineer must not sign or approve of a falsified document or approve of something that goes against what the, their conclusion. This is important because if an engineer goes out and is asked to solve a problem and, f and gets the correct solution and is then told to lie or to overlook what his findings, that puts his integrity in question, that puts his reputation on the line, the company's reputation on the line, and, and that's just not acceptable. A specific example of when this came to play in is when an engineer was asked to come check a property that had been damaged due to a hurricane. The engineer was looked, at, was looked upon by the client. The client asked him, please come and check my property because this needs to be verified that it was damaged by the hurricane so that I could get my recompensation from the insurance. And that's exactly what happened. The engineer went, checked out the property and concluded this in fact was damaged by a hurricane. But an issue arose. When he came back to report that in fact the property had been damaged to his company, a supervisor who was not an engineer, went, looked at the property and concluded that the property was in fact not damaged by the hurricane, but damaged by previous structural, structural lack of care. And this was a problem, of course. The engineer was saying the truth. The man who was a supervisor was not. And this is where the engineer must fall back upon the code of ethics. The engineer must go above his supervisor, must go above his company, and directly to local authorities to report that this is a that they're being lied to. This is important because if that issue is not handled properly, the client will lose that recompensation that he deserves, that he or she deserves, for the damage that they suffered. This is why the code of ethics is established. It's established so whenever a situation like this arises, an engineer isn't pressured into doing the immorally correct thing. At the end of the day, an engineer must adhere to these codes because these codes ensure the safety of others, ensure ethically correct decisions, and ensures that their reputation will put, won't be put on the line if down the line, the insurance company finds out that they in fact had lied or future clients find 
that the property had in fact been damaged by the hurricane. This is why the code of ethics has been established by the National Society of Professional Engineers. This is why we're learning about the code of ethics. And this is why we must always, always fall back on them in tough situations, like that tough situation that the engineer faced when checking for damaged property, for that damaged property. Thank you.